Welcome. The following is a presentation from Absolute Value Learning Center. Okay. So the problem we are trying to solve is that of an area under the curve kind of problem. So it says if the area in square units of the region x comma y where y squared is less than or equal to 4x and x plus y is less than or equal to 1 and x and y are both greater than 0. So that means this is going to be in the first quadrant. okay? Uh, and if that area is a root 2 plus b then a minus b is equal to one of these choices. right? You have to select which choice. Okay. So what is going to be our solution approach? Our approach will be, we will first figure out what is our area of region of interest, right? We will draw the curves and we will figure out what it looks like, at least get a visual picture. Then we will determine how to integrate to get the area, okay? Then of course we will have to solve the two equations simultaneously uh, to find the points of intersection. And while we do that, pay attention to the algebra, okay? I am going to go slowly across each step so that you understand what the algebra is uh, because I really believe that most people make mistakes, silly mistakes in the algebra and they get caught up, you know, and I will give you a few tricks as well as to how to solve some of those, you know, difficult calculations, how to make them easier and things like that, okay. So the first thing is let us draw the curves and see how it looks, right, okay. <clears throat> so y squared minus y squared equals 4x is a parabola with uh, which opens up you know to the right right uh, to the positive uh, x direction because for each value of x there are two values of y okay uh, so it's a parabola opening to the positive x axis and it's symmetric around the x axis uh, x plus y equals 1 is a straight line with a negative slope Right, uh, and it has intercepts uh, of 1 on either axis uh, because if you put x equals 0, y is 1, and if y is equal to 0, x is 1. So, this is how the curves look. Uh, uh, but what is the area of interest really? So, the area of interest is this little thing up here which is in the first quadrant. So, I am going to zoom in and show you how that looks. Okay, so let us just zoom into that area and see how uh, this looks. So I'm going to center it a little bit. Okay, there we go. So what is the area of interest? It is the area under this parabola, right, and under this straight line. So this is the area of interest really. Okay, so how do we solve for it? How do we find? So area under the curve is really a concept from calculus where basically what you have to do is you have to do some kind of integration to get the area under the curve, right? So there are two options available to us. We can either integrate along the x-axis or we can integrate along the y-axis. And let's see how this would look. So if I were to integrate along the x-axis, then I have two different shapes going along the x-axis. Right until this line here, I am under the parabola. So if I want to find this little area here, right up to this, you know, uh, yellow orange line, I integrate to find the area under the parabola. Then once I cross this point here, I am now going to get the area under the straight line, okay, all the way till x equals 1. So you are now dealing with two integrals from 0 until this point here, which I am going to call a sub x, and uh, from a sub x all the way until 1 will be the area under the straight line. Now. What is the other way of solving this? We could decide to go uh, consider these to be functions of y and decide to go along the y-axis up. So if you go along the y-axis up, then all the way up till a y, which is this point here, right, a sub y, the y coordinate of the point or a point of intersection a, then the area is, you know, go from y equals 0 all the way to a y, then go all the way to point a, and then go all the way to point 1 here. So that is the big area and from that area I will subtract the area under the parabola right all the way until the y axis. So if I subtract this area from this total area then I will get the area of interest. Okay? So these are the two paths that we have either integrate along the x axis with two integrals you know one that goes up to ax and one that goes from ax to 1 or we integrate from 0 all the way to ay 
and take the difference of the areas under the curve, the straight line, and the area under this curve, the parabola. Okay, so that's the approach. Okay, so so what next? So let's do that. So I've written down the two options that we have: integrate along the y-axis. So when you integrate along the x-axis, you have to convert your equations as functions of x. So we had y squared equals 4x, so y equals square root of 4x, right? And uh, x plus y equals 1, so y equals minus x plus 1, which is 1 minus x. And our integrals uh, looks like this. From 0 to ax, you are integrating under the parabola. And from ax to 1, you are integrating under the straight line 1 minus x, okay? With respect to dx. If you integrate along the y-axis, on the other hand, your equations are to be written as functions of y. So x is equal to y squared over 4 and x equals 1 minus y. So then you're going to integrate from 0 to ay, remember from 0 all the way to ay, and you're going to take the difference of the two functions. You're going to take the difference of the 1 minus y, which is a straight line, and then you're going to subtract from that the area under the y squared over 4 curve. Okay? So this is this is the solution approach. Now in order to determine the point A, we need to solve the two equations simultaneously. And this is a little bit of algebra here. Okay? This is nothing to do with calculus. You're just solving two equations simultaneously. One is a quadratic, one is a straight line. How do you do that? So you mark them as equation 1 and 2. And then you take equation 2 and you substitute that in equation number 1. So you take y equals 1 minus x and you put that into equation number 1. So what do you get? You get 1 minus x squared equals 4x. So if you expand that, you get 1 plus x squared minus 2x equals 4x. And I'm going to just walk you through the steps so that, you know, you understand and there are any questions, you know, you uh, will at least get a chance to understand what my perspective is and how I solved it, right? So you get x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation, right? And what is the solution of a quadratic equation? x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That is something that you have to memorize, okay? So if you plug that in here, you get x equals minus b minus of minus 6, which is 6, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is minus 6 whole squared, minus 4 times a times 1, which is minus 4. So 6 plus or minus root 32 over 2, which is 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. So x has two different values. And uh, let's see what the value of y is for each of those, okay? Okay, all right. So if you substitute x equals 3 plus 2 root 2, then y is 1 minus 3 plus 2 root 2, which is minus 2 minus 2 root 2. And the reason I crossed out this solution is because this is a negative number. Minus 2 minus 2 root 2 is a negative number. And remember, x and y both have to be positive. So this solution doesn't work for us. What is the other solution? The other solution is x equals 3 minus 2 root 2. So now y is 1 minus 3 minus 2 root 2, which is minus 2 plus 2 root 2. And since root 2 is 1.4, 2 times 1.4 is 2.8, is 2 so it's minus 2 plus 0.8, which is positive. Similarly, 3 minus 2 root 2 is also positive because, you know, 3 minus 2.8 is about 0.2. Now, if I go back to the picture that we had, you can see that it kind of makes sense, you know. So on the y-axis, a y is minus 2 plus 2 root 2, which is just about 0.8, which makes sense. And uh, the 3 minus 2 root 2 is about 0.2, which also kind of makes sense. Okay? All right, let's get back here. So we have found our ax and a y. Okay, 3 minus 2 root 2 is the x uh, coordinate. And minus 2 plus 2 root 2 is the y coordinate. And these are the x and y coordinates of a point A, which lies on both the straight line as well as the parabola. And that is a critical point to remember. Okay, A lies on both the straight line as well as the parabola. That means there is a relationship between this A of x and A y. Okay, what is that relationship? A x and A y are related in such a way that if you square this number, minus 2 plus 2 root 2, if you square it, you will get 4 times this, okay? Because y squared is equal to 4x and a lies on that. The other interesting thing is, if you just take uh, 1 minus ax, you will also get ay, okay? 
So 1 minus h because it lies in the straight line as well. So I have those two pieces of information with me just from algebra that ax and ay have this relationship that if you square ay, you'll get 4 times at ax and if you uh, do 1 minus ax, you'll get ay. Okay, both of those will be true and we'll use that in our algebra calculations. Okay, so let's integrate along the x-axis. Let's just choose one of the options. Okay, so if you recall, what we were going to do was we were going to go from 0 to ax and integrate under the parabola and then go from ax to 1 and integrate under the straight line. Okay, so let's do that. Um, if you, so what's the integral of square root of 4 uh, x? The so square root of 4 kind of falls out as a 2 and the integral of square root of x is x to the power 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. Okay. Now, uh, so this 3 over 2 in the denominator kind of flips and becomes, you know, 2 over 3 and multiplies with this 2 and becomes 4 over 3. But the reason this is 2 over 3 here is it the 2 cancels out and I'll tell you why. Okay, so what is 3 minus 2 root 2 uh, to the power 3 over 2? Is 3 minus 2 root 2 times 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power half. Now here is where our tricks come in. 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power half is x to the power half and x to the power half is really y over 2. Okay. Remember I said this line, this points lie on both the straight line as well as on the parabola. So x uh, to the power half is nothing but y squared over 2. Okay, and I'm going to use that because it's very difficult to take the square root of 3 minus 2 root 2. How do you do that, right? So instead, I'm going to square y and divide by 2. And that's exactly uh, what I would have done. Uh, sorry, uh, y over 2 is the square root of x. So here is my y and there's a 2 underneath that which cancels with that other 2 and that's why this is 2 over 3 and not 4 over 3. So 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power half is just y over 2, okay? Then you can just multiply these out and simplify and you get this. How about this guy? This is 1 minus x and the integral of that is just x minus x squared over 2. And now you have to apply two limits here. First you apply the limit of 1 into this and then you apply the limit of 3 minus 2 root 2 and you subtract that, okay? So if you just plug in x equals 1 here, you'll get 1 minus 1 over 2, which is half, which is the half here. And then you take this x and you plug in 3 minus 2 root 2 and you put a minus sign in front. So minus 3 minus 2 root 2. And then plus, because there's a minus and there's a minus in front, so that's a plus, plus x squared over 2. Okay. So this x squared is fairly simple. This is 9 plus 8 plus 6 root 2. 2, 6 times 2, 12 root 2. So this is 9 plus 8 is 17 minus 2 root 2, okay, by 2. And 1 minus, uh, half minus 3 is minus 5 over 2. And that's minus and minus becomes plus 2 root 2. So you have to be very careful in the algebra here, okay. If you get lost in the algebra and you don't uh, take care, then you make silly mistakes. And then this, uh, you subtract, uh, you multiply this and you get 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. Then 3 times 2 root 2 is 6 root 2 and then this is 4 root 2 that's 10 root 2 and then minus 2 root 2 times plus 2 root 2 is minus 8 okay so this is minus 14 plus 10 root 2 so we just need to add these two so when you add those two you'll get minus 10 over 3 plus 8 root 3 over 2 and this is our answer except what is our question the question was if the solution is of the form a root 2 plus b then what is a minus b okay so you have to one ad additional twist right at the end. So a root 2 means uh, 8 by 3 must be a and b must be minus 10 over 3. Okay, so you subtract them and a minus b is 6 and this is our answer. Now we could stop here, okay, but I want to tell you that we are not done yet. Let's do the other piece as well, which is uh, let's do the uh, integral along the y-axis, okay? So if you recall, our integral along the y-axis was 0 to ay, and then we were going to do the difference of the two functions with respect to y. So I've put the ax and ay here for reference. 
So you are going to go from 0 to minus 2 plus 2 root 2, then 1 minus y minus y squared over 4. Now what is the integral of 1 minus y minus y squared over 4? It is just y minus y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3. And here again we are going to use a few tricks here. Okay? For example, y squared over 2. What is y squared over 2? Okay, y squared over 2 is just 2x because y squared is 4x. Okay, so y squared over 2 is just 2x. Okay, so I'm going to just put instead of y squared over 2, I'm just going to say 2 times x here. Similarly, what is y cubed? Now, I can certainly take this and cube it, okay, but that's too much work for me. Okay, let's simplify. Let's be smart about it. So, what's y cubed is y times y squared. But what is y? Okay, and what is y squared? y squared is 4x. So, y times y squared is just 4xy. Okay, and then uh, the 4 and the 12 becomes a 3 here. And this is just, you know, 4x uh, times y, okay, uh, x times y. So you go through the multiplication here, you go through the algebra, and you'll come up with the same answer, which is just as it should be, okay. So that's uh, the answer. So it's a good thing to have, you know, different ways of solving a problem, and uh, you come up with the same answer, then you feel confident that you've got the right answer, okay. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this presentation from Absolute Value Learning Center. Please follow us on Instagram at absolute.value.learning and go to our website to register for courses today. Thank you.